Hello there and welcome to Learning Stats 2 and in this guide I'm gonna show you how to create your own server. Yeah, a real server basically. So there are a bunch of companies that offer platform as service so you can use their service to create your own server. And the good part is that you do not have to manage the hardware because these companies take care of that and you just have to pay a very minimal fee if you're just starting out and you can scale as per your requirement. So a lot of companies are there, DigitalOcean is there, the newer one Alibaba Cloud, Linode, AWS, the Microsoft Azure and uh, Google Cloud and bunch of more companies that are in uh, this particular field. So they all offer you a free trial. So if you are creating the account for the first time, then you get 12 months of free subscription. In the Google scenario, they are giving you $300 worth of credits so you can utilize or spend these $300 in their service. A free service plan for 12 months. AWS also comes with 12 months free subscription. I think also provides you $100 worth of credit so you can use those $100 for free. The Alibaba also offers you the 12 month of free service. You can use anything. They do not have, I, I think, any kind of restriction on any particular service. And uh, the Digital Ocean also gives you $100 of uh, credit and you have to utilize that credit in the 60 days. So the process is kind of pretty much same in all of these companies' websites. But for the easiness, I'm going to go with the Digital Ocean. You just have to create the account. You can even use your Google account or your GitHub account. Or simply sign up using your own email address so after signing up you will see a similar dashboard here just have to navigate to the droplets because these guys call it droplets and the google calls it compute engine virtual machines aws calls it ec2 and uh, these guys are calling just cpus they also call it ec and the digital ocean calls it uh, a droplet basically so in order to create a droplet simply head on to this section and create your droplet over here simply click on this and here you have to choose the operating system for your server so as you know I'm a kind of fan of Ubuntu so I'm gonna go with the Ubuntu but you are free to use any server over here so choose your server and they also comes with the older versions and uh, I'm surprised that they are providing you 20.10 which is the latest edition I think and it only comes with six months of support so they are providing it that is pretty cool so you have to choose uh, the operating system over here and then you can choose uh, the kind of CPU basically so if you want a shared CPU these are the cheapest one you can also use a general purpose CPU the optimized CPU memory optimized and these are different kind of CPUs so the one thing that you have to notice here that this is a shared CPU and these all four are the dedicated. But for the easiness I'm going to choose for basic. So in the basic you also have a bunch of options. The regular Intel CPU with SSD, the Intel CPU with the NVMe and with the AMD. I think these two options are new because these were not available earlier. So you can go with this one if you want a faster memory basically. So regular SSDs are not as fast as NVMEs because NVMEs is kind of 40% faster than the regular SSDs. So you can choose between these two. I'm just gonna choose the NVMe here and I'm gonna choose the $6 plan that is per month and uh, that's it. If you wanna add additional storage because with this you only get 25 GB of storage and uh, 1 GB of RAM and uh, 1000 GB of transfer. If you want more storage then you can add it here and here you have to choose the location for your server as i'm from india so i'm going to choose a server that is in india so this is the bangalore location so i'm gonna choose that over here now here you have a bunch of options as well the one is the ipv6 then the user data and then the monitoring you probably want to enable the monitoring because this gives you the information about the server how it's running basically and if you need IPv6 then you can enable it you also get these options afterwards I mean you can enable it later as well now here you have the authentication and you have got two options either you can go with the SH key or you can go with a password basically 
now uh, this is kind of less secure they also verbosely tells you that uh, it is not as secure as uh, this is so it is always a good idea to use an access key so i'm gonna create a ssh key and i'm gonna enter that ssh key over here so you can easily create a ssh key basically by opening up your terminal now in order to create an ssh key you have to install the open ssh server so simply execute the installation command and install that after that you just have to use the keys and tool for ssh to create the public and private keys so for that just type ssh hyphen keys in and it will generate the keys now i already have generated the keys so these are here so this is the private key and this is the public key and this key you have to paste it over there so what you can do you can simply open it up in any text editor i'm gonna use the g edit so this is the key i'm gonna copy it and i'm gonna paste it inside here you can name the key they also shows you the command that you have to run in order to generate the key pair so i have already shown you that simply click on this add ssh key and uh, navigate below here you can create droplets if you want to create multiple droplets then you can simply click on this add button and it will add an additional droplet basically i'm gonna create single one so i'm gonna call it linux h2o and uh, that's it that's that's all you have to do now simply hit on the create droplet button and uh, this will create it this is nbme so the time will not be as long as with the regular ssd so it's done you have your server up and running in the cloud and this is your ip address so now as you can see you have got the option over here to enable the ipv6 if you have requirement for that otherwise you can simply leave it there now i can simply log into the server easily and you have got two options either you can use the option over here to access the server using the web console or you can simply log into your distributions directly so for that you have to copy this ip address and go to your terminal as I showed you earlier that I have these two keys, one is the private and this one is the public. This public key I have added to the server and now I'm gonna use this private key to log into the server. So what you have to do, you have to use the SSH and the private key is here and the key name is do Linux basically. You have to add the flag of hyphen i and after that you have to specify the username and the IP address of the server. Now the username, the default username is usually root and the IP address that we just copied is this. Now I can simply hit enter. Now I'm going to accept it. Okay, I have to type yes basically. Now it is asking for the passphrase and this is the passphrase that you get when you generate the SSH key. And uh, if there you set up a passphrase, then you have to specify the password over here as well. My password is this one. And uh, you can also create an SS key without a password. I'm gonna hit enter and uh, now I'm logged into the server. Now this is the server that we created. You can see these are the processes up and running. This is the memory uses, the disk uses and the load on the server. So you can use your command like you can use your top and you can see these are the things that are going on. You can also use at stop because that is more intuitive for that. So this way you can basically create your own server and the process is more or less same in all these companies website. Now you can simply set it up for anything like if you want to install any application you can use the regular commands. For example let's install the screen fetch. Now I'm running as a root so I do not have to type the password hit the enter and this will install the screen fetch so here's the detail about the server so yeah that's all in this video in the upcoming videos i will be going deep in the server setup basically so hit the like to the video that will increase me 
let me know what you think about it in the comment section below and if you want to suggest something then do let me know and uh, i shall catch you in the next one till then take care and keep enjoying linux